Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show. After Chun Ming left the boss, Old Wu suddenly followed him and put his hand on Chun Ming's shoulder and said, I didn't expect you to be so handsome, Xiao Mu. Chun Ming slightly adjusted the helmet he put on again and said, That's not how you flatter someone. He. Old Wu laughed twice and walked beside Chun Ming. Chun Ming looked at him strangely and asked, Are you not going to slack off? You can slack off any time, and you can skip work any time. You only took off your helmet and met Old Lu once. I want to see how he will react. But I have to go back to the maintenance plant to put my things away. Chun Ming pointed to the transport robot beside him and the four metal coffins on it. Old Wu said indifferently, It's okay. I'm usually very free. Okay, whatever you want. Chun Ming first went back to the maintenance plant, put the coffin on the iron ore, and then went to the space station administration. After finding the factory director's office and knocking on the door, Chun Ming took off his helmet. The factory director's voice rang out from the office. Come in. Old Wu rushed into the office without waiting for the words to fall, sat on the sofa in the office, and looked at the factory director with interest. The factory director just glared at him and turned to look at Chun Ming, who came in from behind. He didn't react when he saw Chun Ming for the first time, and then he noticed the light protective suit that Chun Ming often wore. After confirming Chun Ming's identity, it was at this time that the factory director realized that Chun Ming had basically removed his guard against them. Although the factory director was a little surprised, he also knew that this day would come sooner or later and quickly asked Chun Ming to sit in front of him. The factory director's reaction made Old Wu on the side a little disappointed, and he went to play with the terminal by himself. As soon as Chun Ming sat down, the factory manager said with a hint of joy on his face, Xiao Mu, you came at the right time. Your first batch of refurbished goods has been dragged to other places and sold. The money needs to be transferred to the space station's account, and the account of the secondhand weapons I transferred out will be balanced. The rest is the net profit. Guess how much it is? Chun Ming was naturally very clear about the price of the weapons he had touched personally and said, 30 million. The factory manager's mouth corners raised a little more and said, yes, wait two days and your share will be credited to the account. Then we will find a place to have a meal. Okay. Seeing that Chun Ming did not object, the factory manager smiled and reached out to press the computer next to him to continue working but suddenly realized that Chun Ming suddenly came to him because he had something to do, stopped what he was doing and asked, What do you want to talk to me about today? Chun Ming originally wanted to ask for leave to go to the Star Region government to pay the bounty, but since he knew the news that the previous batch of goods had been sold, it was just right to not mention the matter of asking for leave. Take advantage of now to say everything he wanted to say before. Chun Ming sat in his seat and said to the factory manager seriously, I need to ask you something important. The factory manager saw Chin Ming like this for the first time, and he was unconsciously taken seriously. Tell me, do you know the mining space station in the RM, two-star system next door? The factory manager frowned and said, That was the company's abandoned space station 30 years ago. The star system has been blocked by the military. You, oh... I remember that you Hui and the military are fine. You ask this? Because you saw that space station before? Yes. The factory manager followed Chun Ming's train of thought and said, The important thing you were talking about is not to recycle the equipment on the space station, right? The military, it is impossible to give you the opportunity to steal things. You didn't have any preparations for the last time when you attacked. It is better not to fight in this area. What is the thing? Technology. Chun Ming's identity, Chun Ming's vigilance, and Chun Ming's internal terminals of the old model in the hands of Chun Ming's hands were combined. You! Chun Ming took out his own terminal with such a little nervousness and displayed his identity information in front of the factory director. His resume of working in the company is clearly displayed on it. Seeing the factory manager's sudden reaction, Old Wu also came over as before and looked at Chun Ming's real identity information with the factory manager. The more he looked, the more serious his expression became, just like the factory manager. He couldn't help but ask Chin Ming, You have lived from 30 years ago to now? 
what happened to the space station. It's a bit long to talk about it. To sum it up, the space station was suddenly attacked by a kind of zerg, and then the space station was gone, and everyone died. Not long. The long things are what happened later. For example, why didn't Cinda Corporation come to rescue the space station? Why did the military come to the space station that was slaughtered by the Zerg faster than Cinda? Why did the military block the galaxy for 30 years? No one escaped 30 years ago? Why did the military block the galaxy and ignore the mining rights purchased by Cinda Corporation? And what is the outpost built by the military inside the galaxy used for? These are the long places. Old Wu scratched his head and said, Oh, what is the outpost used for? To dig sky steel. Ah, ah. The factory director's reaction was more intense than Old Wu's. Although he knew that the outpost previously deployed by the military there was attacked, he knew only so much. Therefore, after hearing what Chen Ming said, he stood up directly by supporting the desk in front of him and asked in disbelief, Xiao Mu, are you sure? Chun Ming said with a very serious expression, I am sure. There are Alcheron sky eels living in the orbit of the gas giant planet. I saw with my own eyes that Yu Wei's fleet raided their outpost, robbed their stored sky steel, and captured several sky fish. I think the official did not investigate the sky fish when selling the mining rights. And after the space station was open to the outside world for a period of time, the military discovered the existence of sky fish in advance, so they chose to use despicable means to seize it. I'm not sure if the facts are what I think, but I don't think there is any other reason to explain this situation. The company shouldn't give up the sky steel for no reason, right? The factory director sat back in his chair and said, Absolutely not. Chen Ming was not surprised by this result. After all, he had worked in Shinda Company. But after all, it's been 30 years, so I just want to know the attitude of the company's top management towards this matter. Director, you should know why I want to do this. The director nodded and said, I understand. If the company wants to regain the space station, then you are the best bargaining chip and treasure. But if the company wants to reconcile with the military or is already reconciled, then you are the most troublesome thorn in the eye. This is really... The director exhaled a long breath and said, I don't know the overall attitude of the company, but at least there is good news. Basically, everyone in our space station is very unhappy with the military, especially when they betrayed us before. As for the company's attitude, it's a serious matter. I must ask my superiors. With the director, no, the director can't do it. I have to find someone who can completely influence me. Yes, that should be enough, but it may take some time. Old Wu suddenly interrupted at this time and asked, Old Lu, can you still contact such a person? How do you think I got the position of factory director? Chun Ming stretched out his hand to push Old Wu away and asked, How long will it take? It will take three or four days, and I can't guarantee the result. But you don't have to worry too much. As long as no one comes to check you, you can continue to stay on the space station with the fake identity of Mu Shuekong. I will never make mistakes but it's better for you to keep wearing protective clothing as before before the results come out. Chun Ming expected such a postponed result. He had already started planning other ways to go when all the ways of Shinda Company were blocked. Even if it didn't work, it didn't mean that he had to hang himself on a tree. Chun Ming nodded gratefully to the factory manager and said, I understand. I'll trouble you. I want to take a leave these two days. The factory manager didn't expect Chen Ming to suddenly change the topic from the conspiracy between the military and Shinda company to Chen Ming's own leave. He was stunned for a moment before asking, Where are you going? To the Star Region government, to pay a few pirate bounties. Pirate bounties? Oh, you want to get a license yourself, right? Then, this leave. The factory manager lowered his head slightly and thought. He didn't really want to agree to Chun Ming's leave, because he was sure that everything Chun Ming said was true. If the company really suffered a loss in the space station and couldn't get back, it meant that Chun Ming was very important to the company. If the person is released and something unexpected happens, the loss of Shinda Company will never be recovered. But the factory director is not sure about the attitude of the company. Because Shinda Company has been divided into two factions many years ago. 
one faction advocates self-development and is not subject to interference from any external forces. The other faction advocates actively building good relations with the military or the government in order to obtain better treatment and preferential policies. The former is called the company faction, and the latter is called the military faction because the company mainly produces ships and it is easier to build relations with the military. The attitudes of the two factions towards Chun Ming are absolutely different, and it is hard to say whether the company will protect Chun Ming. And it is not just the company, there may be some problems on the space station side. Although the space station has always paid a certain amount of protection fees to the military in exchange for protection when attacked by external forces such as the Yue Mechanical Clan. But the people on the space station side are actually basically sent by the company, and the overall attitude towards the military is average, especially when the military has violated its promise before. But the factory director cannot guarantee that there will be no military personnel inside the space station. If Chun Ming stays in the space station, there is indeed a certain risk. Before really confirming the attitude of the company's top management, letting Chun Ming go out for two days is actually a good option. In the Star Region government, the Star Region military is nothing. If there is really any problem here in the space station, he can also warn Chun Ming in advance through the internet. Moreover, the factory director raised his head and looked at Lao Wu next to him. It just so happened that Lao Wu was always slacking off in the past two days. After all, he has been working honestly for more than 10 days since Chin Ming came. Just give him a holiday together, let him relax a little, and work more efficiently later. After considering the pros and cons, the factory director said to Chin Ming, Okay, I will approve your leave now. This should be your first time to go to the government of the Edge Starfield, right? How about letting Lao Wu accompany you? He has experience. So good. When Lao Wu heard the factory director's words, he looked a little excited, and it seemed that he had not left the space station for a long time. That depends on whether Xiao Mu. Xiao Ming agrees. Lao Wu suddenly changed his face and squeezed out a flattering look that was the same as the previous and scrupulous businessman in Chun Ming's eyes, staring at him. Chun Ming ignored him directly, but still considered the factory director's proposal. Although he had indeed come into contact with all kinds of people before, he rarely came into contact with people from the government or the Edge Star field where the rules were not so strict. Even after his job was transferred to the mining space station, it was the same. Not to mention the opportunity to come into contact with people, it was not easy to get up and work several times. Basically, it was a straight line between freezing hibernation, waking up to work, and continuing to hibernate. If Lao Wu is here, it will be much more convenient to do some things. Chun Ming really doesn't mind bringing one more person. So he agreed. Soon Chun Ming and Lao Wu left the factory director's office and returned to the repair shop. As soon as he came back, Chun Ming found that there was an extra mule class ship parked in the repair shop. The boss's message came at about this time. He said that he helped Chun Ming repair the ship a little and sent it here. If there is any problem with the ship, he can find him again. It happened that the mule-class ship that Chen Ming took away before was still being renovated, and this ordinary mule-class ship could just be driven away. At the same time, this mule-class ship also helped Chen Ming do something, taking away the looming-class ship he brought back before. Chen Ming on the space station couldn't do anything to Yu Huey's ship. After removing the internal compartment of the cargo hold, it was still easy to stuff a frigate into a cargo hold. After getting it done, Chun Ming took Lao Wu directly to the iron ore. They probably won't stay on the ship most of the time this time, so there's no need to prepare anything. While looking around on the iron ore, Old Wu suddenly remembered an excuse that Chun Ming had obviously made up before, and jokingly said, Xiao Ming, where is your captain? In the captain's room. Do you believe it? Old Wu smiled after hearing Chun Ming's reply, and continued to follow Chun Ming's ask to visit the remodeled iron ore. The planting cabin that the crew of the iron or used to replenish fresh vegetables and fruits during the long process of collecting rare metal ores has been dismantled by Chin Ming. The studio has been moved here and is more complete than before. The extra space in the original living cabin has now been converted into a small gym, and other changes are not big. When the two came to the captain's room at the front, Old Wu suddenly saw Xiao Shi playing on the running wheel. 
and the mini pirate captain hat on its head, which Chun Ming bought when he was bored and bought miscellaneous daily necessities. When Xiao Shi noticed a stranger coming, he stopped and looked at Lao Wu for a few seconds. Both sides blinked quickly and unconsciously. Xiao Shi turned around and went back into the yard placed by Chun Ming in the captain's room and blocked the hole it dug with his hat. And Lao Wu couldn't help but twitch his mouth. He really didn't expect that the captain Chun Ming said was real, but there was something wrong with this captain. Lao Wu wanted to get closer to Xiao Shi's or to take a closer look at Xiao Shi, but was stopped by Chun Ming. Stand still, we are leaving. Lao Wu smacked his lips with some regret, leaned against the wall of the captain's room, and watched Chin Ming operate the control panel of the spacecraft. He drove out of the space station with the other centurions and mules and headed for the edge of the galaxy. He had known from his boss that Chun Ming was a psychic, and he also knew that Chin Ming's psychic power must be related to the spacecraft. So he was not surprised at all that Chun Ming was controlling three spaceships but he suddenly noticed a problem and asked, Xiao Ming, isn't this direction going to the star region government? Sitting in front of the control panel, Chen Ming quickly set the spaceship to autopilot and replied, it's true, because I feel a little uneasy driving these three ships alone, so I have to take one of the ships I park somewhere else. Do you have other ships? Where are they parked? Aren't you afraid of being stolen? Chun Ming tilted his head while sitting on the chair and squinted at old Wu, who was always looking for something to talk about. Just pretend I didn't say anything. The dark cemetery is not far from the space station, and Chun Ming soon arrived at his destination. Through the porthole of the iron, or you can see three spaceships floating in the dark space environment outside. Fighter Kai, Wei Guang, and the destroyer Du Guang. Du Guang Wei Guang and the unrepaired lumen that was just released from the mule-class cabin cannot be taken away. But at present, Chun Ming can always take the fighter Kai, which can be said to be the second strongest combat power. After gathering four ships, Chun Ming changed direction again, entered the hyperspace channel, and flew straight to the location of the Star Region government. Shortly after Chun Ming left the space station, a very inconspicuous spacecraft docked at the dock of the space station. The five members of the military team who had previously performed the space station search mission were now in plain clothes, all gathered in the cabin, waiting for the captain's instructions. And the captain, as usual, reached out and knocked on the cabin door to attract everyone's attention to himself, and said, Are the mission requirements clear? Search for signs that Chun Ming has been active in the space station. A team member raised his hand and asked, Then where do we start? The captain pointed to the maintenance plant next to him and said, There. Leave two people to inquire at the maintenance plant, and the rest of you will follow me to find the contact person. Ah, just inquire like this. The captain said with a look of disappointment, I told you to pretend you just need to show an image of working hard so that the superiors will not blame you. You will not really think can you find it? Are you dreaming? Maybe. The captain waved his hand casually and said, It's up to you. Anyway, I suggest you treat it as a public-funded tour. I remember that the facilities inside this space station are pretty good. Play is fun, but remember to do a little bit of work, otherwise it will be difficult to prepare the report. The captain pointed to two team members and said, You two are responsible for the maintenance plant. The people in the maintenance plant usually have the most contact with people. Ask more people. If it doesn't work, spend some money and you can reimburse them. Whether there is a result or not, at least you have done it. That's it, get off the ship. The five members of the military team got off the ship and dispersed. The two team members assigned by the captain wandered around the maintenance plant twice according to the captain's instructions and found the employees on duty today. One was a newcomer who joined some time ago and the other was Tian Jiwen. With the captain leading the way, the two team members were too lazy to go around too much and directly found the two with the terminal. Pointing to the photo of Chun Ming and the photo of the Iron Ore's initial appearance, he asked, Brothers, have you seen this man and this spaceship? Chun Ming had never taken off his helmet in front of the factory director and the Iron Ore had been remodeled before the newcomers joined. So the newcomer's answer was naturally that he didn't know anything. Although Tian Jiwen next to him had never seen Chun Ming's face, 
He had indeed seen Qin Ming's iron or before it was remodeled. But at this time, he did not have the idea of revealing this news directly in his heart because he was arranged by the factory director to see a psychologist before. After seeing it, he also knew that his emotional outburst at that time was just because of anger. There was no real conflict between him and Chun Ming. So after a little hesitation, he also chose to say he didn't know. The two team members focused their eyes on Tian Jiwen for a while. And after getting the answer, they looked at each other, thanked each other tacitly, and left the maintenance plant. And all this happened to be seen by the bald man who was on vacation today. Chun Ming who had already left the galaxy where the pirate space station was located for a considerable distance, was not connected to the sentinels and mules who remained in the space station, so he naturally did not know what happened on the space station. He was now sitting on a coffin that he had placed in the engine compartment, studying his whispering stone that had suddenly undergone an inexplicable change. After the iron, ore was successfully on the route. Because of the previous conversation with the boss, Chen Ming planned to try to contact the Whispering Stone more often in his daily life, as the boss said. Maybe in the future, he can directly rely on psychic fluctuations to activate the range effect of the Spirit Stone like the boss. Although the activation effect of the Whispering seems to be a bit wrong, it will also affect the activator himself. But there must be a way to solve this, otherwise the boss would not mention the concept of psychic weapons. Like the boss's gentle Spirit Stone, it is definitely not as suitable as Chun Ming's whispering as a weapon. So Chun Ming took advantage of the spaceship being halfway and Lao Wu was playing with Xiao Shi to come to the engine room. However, when Chun Ming took out the whispering spirit stone sealed in the tin can, he suddenly found that the whispering stone, which had been sealed, had undergone some unexpected changes. The most obvious thing is that the twisted black patterns on the stone itself have all turned into a dark red pattern, like blood coagulation. Moreover, these change patterns are more distorted than before, and people can feel obvious discomfort when looking at them with the naked eye. After actually getting close to the spirit stone, Chen Ming can directly feel the irritating whispering without even touching it. Realizing that something is wrong, Chen Ming immediately turned back and put on a heavy protective suit. Approaching carefully, and after feeling that the influence range of the Whispering Stone has increased, he carefully stretched out a finger and pressed it. Just when Chen Ming just touched the Spirit Stone, a whispering sound that was stronger and more difficult to suppress than before sounded in his ears. If touching the Spirit Stone before was like a madman whispering in Chen Ming's ear, then now it was like a group of madmen were stuffed in a Chen Ming's head, telling their delirium. The strong whispering stimulated Chun Ming's brain, causing him to let go of his hand immediately. The whispering faded, but Chun Ming's brows were still furrowed. He didn't just hear crazy whispers, he also saw something in the whispers, something visible to the naked eye. It seemed like a person was shot dead with a gun against his head. The gun itself and the person holding the gun were very blurry, but the appearance of the person who was killed was very clear. A middle-aged man with a mustache, fair-skinned, thin, and about 1.75 meters tall. He was wearing a more formal work suit, which looked like it was velvet and very warm. In addition, this person's pocket was slightly bulging. At the moment he fell to the ground, a thumb-sized stone rolled out of his pocket. Although Chin Ming couldn't see the specific appearance of the stone, nor the pattern on it. But he was sure this was also a spiritual stone. Although this scene was extremely real. But Chen Ming still couldn't be sure if this was an illusion caused by the whispers. After thinking about it, he directly opened the panel and took a look. What he didn't expect was that the spirit stone on the panel actually changed. The original spirit stone whisper became spirit stone, falsehood, and the change in the name alone made people feel even more uncomfortable. However, the 16 grams of spirit energy obtained by disassembling the spirit stone was still the original, without any change. Chun Ming shook his head to get rid of the aftermath of the whisper in his mind, thinking about what reasonable explanation could explain the sudden change of the whispering stone. After thinking about it for a while, Chun Ming felt that the most likely cause of the current situation should be the corpses in the coffin. 
The appearance of these corpses was the most obvious and most likely to be related to the change of the Whispering Stone on the iron or spacecraft in the near future. But what is the truth? Chun Ming, a half-baked psychic, can't come to a correct conclusion at all. Old Wu, an ordinary person, certainly doesn't know about this. Although Xiao Shi seems to be sensitive to psychic energy, it is just a hamster and can't do anything. If Chun Ming wants to know the answer, he can only ask the boss for help. But now the iron ore is in the hyperspace channel, and there are no large signal adapters in the space station or colony around, so there is no way to connect to the Starfield network. There is no way to contact the boss. Fortunately, after the Whispering Stone became the Liar Stone, except for the abnormality when contacted, the only other thing that happened was that the range of influence of the Whispering only increased a little. As long as the stone is placed in the corner of the engine compartment, it will not affect other parts of the spacecraft. Chun Ming also spent some time observing it and confirmed that the range of influence of this stone will not continue to expand. It should not be a big problem to contact the boss after arriving at the Starfield Capital Galaxy. And Chun Ming will only spend two days at most this time, so he will talk about it when he returns. Chun Ming doesn't need this much time. Of course, to be on the safe side, Chun Ming finally threw the Whispering Stone directly onto the mule. Stay away from the coffin, stay away from the iron ore, stay away from Gamma B, and stay away from Chun Ming himself. From the space station to the dark cemetery, from entering the hyperspace channel to exiting the hyperspace channel, including the time for acceleration in the middle, it only takes less than one minute. And it took Chen Ming more than six hours to reach the star system where the star government is located from the dark cemetery. And as Chun Ming's spaceship approached the star capital, many other spaceships passed by around the channel. Most of them were caravan spaceships, but there were also some that looked like bounty hunter spaceships and even military spaceships, Chun Ming saw some. So that his gladiator modified was a little inconspicuous. But this was also good news for Chun Ming. Before Chun Ming controlled the spaceship to jump out of the hyperspace channel and head to the star system, he turned on the spaceship transponder in advance, in case they are targeted by patrols and cause trouble as soon as they enter. The four spaceships quickly jumped out of the hyperspace channel and arrived at the edge of the galaxy of the RJW star system, the capital of the star region. Here, Chun Ming can see the situation inside the galaxy at a glance. This is a galaxy with seven planets. It revolves around the yellow dwarf, star named RJW located in the center of the galaxy. The seven planets in the galaxy from the inside to the outside are two high-temperature planets close to the star. A bare, earthy brown and barren planet. One is half covered in white, and the other half is white except for some green in the equator. This planet is where the colony of the capital of the star region is located. Further out is a planet with red flames. And on the outermost side are a gas giant and an ice giant. The sensors of the iron mine show that these planets have built space stations of different shapes and functions in their orbits around the stars. And every space station and every planet surface, there are a large number of spacecraft taking off and landing every moment. At the same time, there are more flying out of the galaxy. This scene is more than Yuwei's colony in addition to these signs of development and vitality within the galaxy. What attracts Chan Ming's attention most in the entire galaxy is the crystallization of human technology built on the orbit of the fourth planet in the galaxy, the Stargate. Here is the capital of the Gallo star field where Chun Ming is currently located. Here, Chun Ming seems to be able to see a glimpse of the prosperity of the star field. Chun Ming turned off the automatic driving, manually controlled the iron, or, and took the other three ships to approach the space station on the white habitable planet in the galaxy. He had done some homework before. The functions of the outer space station surrounding the colony planet are basically the same as those of the space stations on Yuhui's side. It is a small branch of a colony. Complete some simple tasks here, or provide some supplies for passing spacecraft. It saves people time by not having to land on the planet for a small matter. But it doesn't work for pirate bounties. Chun Ming still has to go to the surface of the planet and go to the government's professional agency to carry out follow-up operations. 
If the iron ore had not been modified with a militarized system, it would have only needed to apply to land directly. But now, the several armed spacecraft that Chen Ming brought can only temporarily dock in the space station. He can go up and down the space station and the surface by himself through the space elevator or the public personnel transport ship provided by the space station. Otherwise, if he violates the rules and directly breaks into the atmosphere of the planet, the heavy defense array weapons deployed on the surface are no joke. As the several spacecraft controlled by Chun Ming gradually approached the space station on the orbit of the White Planet, Chun Ming took the initiative to send an entry request to the space station. Then the communication from the space station came. After the call was connected, a gentle female voice sounded in the communication channel. Hello, please explain your purpose so that we can register your spacecraft. Submit the bounty. Okay, your identity and purpose have been recorded. Please follow the signal light to enter the dock. In less than a few minutes, Chun Ming successfully parked all four ships in the dock of the space station. Two maps were quickly sent over the network of the space station. One map of the space station and one map of the surface. The places where Chun Ming needed to pay the bounty were specially marked on it, which was very humane. As before, Chun Ming stuffed the small stone into the protective suit helmet and took it down the iron ore. Looking at the architectural style around and the pirate space station, which was somewhat different, Chun Ming looked at it more with some interest, but as he looked, he suddenly thought of a very realistic problem. He turned his head and looked at old Wu, who had a comfortable expression on his face, as if he had been relieved from his busy work, and asked, By the way, how much is the parking fee at the space station? With your current wealth, do you still care about this parking fee? Oh, that's right. Chun Ming nodded and followed the map to the location of the space elevator connecting the space station and the surface of the planet. After waiting for a few minutes and passing through security checks, he boarded this thing that he had only seen in science fiction movies. During the descent of the elevator, Chun Ming could even see through the transparent porthole next to him that the almost flat surface of the planet was getting closer and closer. And when passing through the atmosphere, Chun Ming could even see the heavy snow outside. This is the origin of the white color of the planet. Protective clothing can keep warm in the space environment, so this low temperature that is acceptable to humans is naturally no problem. At this time, Old Wu suddenly said like a tour guide, Although this planet has snow all year round, the temperature at the equator is above 20 degrees Celsius for four months a year, so it is also considered a habitable planet. Originally, there would be no colonies on such planets. After all, there are many good habitable planets, but the other planets in the galaxy are too good. When Chun Ming heard Old Wu's chatter, he remembered the situation of Yu Wei's colony before. After comparing the development gap between the two sides, he asked with great interest, How good is it? Old Wu suddenly seemed to be excited and said, the galaxy, the two innermost planets, contain a large amount of common metal resources and advanced metal resources. Being close to the star results in a high-temperature environment, and there is no need to worry about pollution due to the lack of atmosphere, which has a unique advantage when building industrial smelting equipment. The two outermost giant planets, a gas giant and an ice giant, can provide a large amount of rare isotopes such as deuterium that can be used in industry. Although the remaining two planets are relatively ordinary, they also have resources worth developing. That barren planet was once a habitable planet, and the rock layers inside contain a lot of fossils can be studied. Although the planet, with violent geological changes and volcanoes everywhere, has no development value, the patrol headquarters of the galaxy is built on it. Chun Ming also asked in confusion, the patrol headquarters of the galaxy is built in such a harsh environment. Yes, in fact, most galaxy governments that can build patrol headquarters will choose to build patrol headquarters on volcanic planets in the galaxy if possible. I don't know much about this aspect. Why is this? Old Wu smiled at Chin Ming and said, Hey, I don't know either. In short, because of the relationship with those other planets, the Star Domain government finally settled on the only habitable planet in the galaxy. This galaxy is simply a perfect galaxy template. It can almost achieve self-sufficiency in the galaxy alone.
There should be no such galaxy in the surrounding thousands of light years. Chun Ming turned his attention back to the heavy snow and asked, How do you know so much? Old Wu shook the terminal in his hand with some pride and said, Just checked. The space elevator successfully arrived at the ground after a while. Because the climate of the planet itself is a bit cold, most of the buildings with permanent residents are basically built on the equator. The space elevator just goes directly to the equator and is not too far from the star domain government. With the help of the transport robot carrying the coffin, Chen Ming and Old Wu quickly arrived at the government building. Although it seemed that the sky outside was approaching night, the government departments continued to work. According to the regulations of the empire, no matter what time the local time is, the working hours of all government departments must be stipulated according to the Earth Standard Time. Anyway, with the level of human technology, when it gets dark, the worst that can happen is to add some more lighting. Similarly, relying on technical means, the room can be as dark as at night during the day, which will not affect people's normal rest. Such a unified plan is conducive to the flow of people between galaxies. There is a security check at the gate of the government park, just like at the space elevator. And the person in charge of the inspection is just like the person in charge of the security check of the space elevator. It seems that he didn't see what was lying in the coffin at all, and he just let Chun Ming go. He even pointed to the place where Chun Ming was going to go next, the government police department. Only the guard in charge of letting him go had clearly received the news that he was allowed to pass. But he seemed to want to say something, but he was immediately blocked by Lao Wu who stuffed something into his hand. Chun Ming and Lao Wu still successfully entered the government park with the coffin and came to a separate small building next to the government building. This is the colony's security bureau. There are several service windows next to it, all empty, and no one wants to do anything. Chun Ming walked up and tapped the glass gently. The clerk who was processing the documents raised his head and noticed the transport robot behind Chun Ming and the coffins on it and said, Hello, do you need to confirm a bounty? Yes. Okay. After receiving Chun Ming's affirmative answer, the clerk familiarly picked up a terminal from the side and tapped it a few times to show it to Chun Ming. Please scan it with your terminal, register your identity, and then prepare the required materials, such as combat records and videos, spaceship wreckage, etc. Also, please explain the person you need to collect the bounty from. Chun Ming recalled the information he had written down before and said, a pirate nicknamed Ascaris, his real name should be Liu Kong, with a bounty of 22 million, and his three men. There are no combat videos and spaceship wreckage, but we brought the body. Chun Ming reached out and patted the metal coffin behind him. After all, combat videos and records would expose his Yu Hui ship, and things like spaceship wreckage have basically become materials. Chun Ming still has use for the Mule class destroyer, so it is impossible to hand it over. Besides, it has been repaired and has no value as evidence. A trace of surprise flashed in the eyes of the clerk. 22 million pirates is not a big deal, but it is not small either. It still has some weight. He continued to type on the computer in front of him and said, It's okay to bring only the bodies. Please wait a moment. The clerk quickly printed a paper form and handed it to Chin Ming. It recorded all the information Chin Ming just said. Please take this to the white building next to you. Someone will guide you after you enter. Yes, when he walked out of the security bureau, Chen Ming suddenly found that he seemed to see a familiar figure flashing in the distance and disappeared outside the gate of the government park. Chen Ming narrowed his eyes and wanted to take a closer look, but the figure seemed to have disappeared out of thin air. He frowned slightly and ignored the man. He might have seen it wrong. Chun Ming continued to follow the direction the clerk had just given him and found the white building that looked like a laboratory. As soon as Chun Ming and Old Wu entered, a researcher in a white coat came up to greet them. He smiled and said to Chun Ming, Hello, Mr. Mu. This is the pirate you want to hand over, right? Can we open it to confirm it? No problem. Chun Ming asked the transport robot to place several coffins flat on the ground and reached out to press the corner of one of the coffins. The coffin lid opened automatically, revealing the body of the pirate leader who was no longer in human form. Fortunately, the metal coffin given by the boss was also equipped with a small freezing device to prevent the body from rotting. 
Otherwise, the situation Chen Ming saw now might be even worse. Chun Ming couldn't help but whisper to Lao Wu beside him. The boss looks very angry. Lao Wu also whispered. The colony that was built with a lot of money and connections is still in the development stage, and suddenly someone took away the supplies. You are also angry. The researcher took the terminal and carefully looked at the body for a long time before barely recognizing that the things in the coffin and the person on the bounty list were the same person. He put away the terminal and said to Chen Ming as if he was reciting a formula. No problem, Mr. Mu. Then we will take the body away. The researcher didn't seem to have too many doubts. After all, Chun Ming and Lao Wu had registered their identities all the way here, and they had to come in person to collect the bounty. If you want to cheat the bounty by using fake things instead of real ones, the final outcome will be a cell. We will conduct DNA tests on them and contact you after the results come out. We expect to give you a reply within one working day. As long as the verification is okay, you can go to the place where you did business before to collect the bounty. The bounty does not need to be taxed. If you are short of money when you collect it, you can go directly to the building to find the relevant department to complain. After the researcher finished speaking, he immediately summoned a humanoid transport robot that was obviously more advanced than Chun Ming's spider-type transport robot technology and took away several coffins together. Chun Ming couldn't help but look at the robot a few more times. It was basically certain that this robot could not only transport, but also had no shortage of combat power. This is the good stuff of the government. Chun Ming is just jealous now, but he doesn't have any special ideas. After leaving the government park, the somewhat depressed old Wu suddenly seemed to be resurrected and asked Chun Ming excitedly, We still have one day go and have some fun? Chun Ming considered old Wu's suggestion. He really hadn't had a thorough rest for a long time. It's not bad to think about relaxing for a day. So Chun Ming did not refuse and replied. Then you can tell me a place. I'll tell you. Okay. Old Wu thought for a moment and said, I know a place you might be interested in. What place? The black market. Half an hour later, Chun Ming and Old Wu took the bus to the black market that Old Wu mentioned. Originally, Old Wu wanted to take a public shuttle, but because Chun Ming wanted to see more of this snowy city, they finally took the bus to get here. Although the black market that Old Wu mentioned is called the black market, Chen Ming only discovered it after he actually arrived. The black market is a commercial street that looks very prosperous. Outside, you can see guards without identity badges maintaining order. It is basically similar to an ordinary commercial street, except that the shops inside are basically large shops with large storefronts. Previs Chun Ming stood outside the black market. Looking at the bustling commercial street in front of him, he couldn't help but say, This place is not what I imagined. Old Wu knew that Chen Ming was just sighing, so he walked in first and waved to Chen Ming and said, It's different, so let's go in and take a look first. Chen Ming followed. Observing the goods in the large stores on the black market street, these goods include various advanced weapons and equipment. Among them are military weapons produced by Tachyon Technology with cutting-edge technology as the core design idea. At the same time, there are also many weapons and equipment with obvious military characteristics. The weapons of Shinda Company are not very common, probably because the main direction of Shinda Company's research and manufacturing of weapons and equipment is to ensure average quality while low-cost mass production. Most people who come to places like the black market must want to get the best, so the weapons of Shinda Company are not very popular. Chun Ming is very envious of those things from Tachyon Technology and the military, but he is not in a hurry to buy them. Just look along the way, record things that may be useful to him, and finally confirm and compare them together. Although he has about 30 million yuan in his hand now, it is really not much, so he must be careful with his money. As Chun Ming walked, he suddenly said to Lao Wu next to him, I thought the black market should be more secretive or it should be an online platform. Online? Who knows what is sold online? Here, you pay and get the goods and if there is a problem, it will be solved on the spot. Isn't it good? There are many good goods here that have never been used. What you mean is that there are also secondhand refurbished goods for sale. Lao Wu spread his hands and said, If you buy refurbished goods and don't recognize them, it's the buyer's problem. Anyway, no one will recognize them after leaving the black market.
Yeah. Chun Ming responded and continued to scan the surroundings. Secondhand goods are also a place he must pay attention to. In addition to looking at the weapons displayed in the store, he was also paying attention to some people. Some pirates who were disguised but still recognized by Chun Ming had bounties on their bodies. They walked openly on the streets of the black market without any trouble from anyone. It seems that the government intends to eat both pirates and bounty hunters. After all, pirates and bounty hunters are big consumers of high-end weapons. After Chin Ming saw a pirate with a certain bounty for the third time, he couldn't help but ask Lao Wu, Can we target other people here? What do you mean? Robbery? Don't take me with you if you want to die. No, it's pirates. Pirates. Lao Wu's eyes swept over the people around him, and he also saw a few ordinary pirates in disguise. But he shook his head and said, No, any use of force is prohibited on the planet, so we can't do it. It's not easy to fight even if we leave the planet. We definitely can't fight inside the galaxy because of the patrol team. Didn't you see that patrol team on the way here? A patrol team led by a cruiser. If we really want to do it, we have to wait for the opportunity and wait for people to leave the galaxy on their own initiative. But if we can't squat in advance, it's easy for others to enter the channel first and then run away at the fastest speed. There is a speed limit in the channel. It's hard to catch up if someone runs away first. If we want to do it, we must prepare in advance. If you really have an idea, I also know where the place where intelligence is sold here is. Do you want to go and have a look? Chun Ming just mentioned it casually when he saw it. Since Lao Wu mentioned so many problems, he didn't have to do it. So he said directly, not for the time being, buy something first. Then let's go. Chun Ming continued to pay attention to the goods in the shops on the commercial street. While checking the goods, he gradually went deep into the center of the black market district, came to the most prosperous place in the black market. Here, Chun Ming could even see several shops that covered an area as large as a city square. Of course, the shop itself was a commercial building, and the main reason was that the open space outside occupied a larger area. Goods were placed on these open spaces, just like in commercial buildings and shops. However, they were not weapons and equipment, but some intact spaceships. These spaceships were all standard military spaceships that had not been castrated, and they came from all kinds of manufacturers. Chun Ming even saw a Lumen-class destroyer of Yuhui, which was obviously being sold as a collection. Such a black market that clearly sold military spaceships and various controlled goods to ordinary people was right under the nose of the Star Region government. And the most prosperous place in the Star Region was blatantly violating the law. There were even government guards helping to maintain order, which really showed Chen Ming the thin legal concepts in the marginal Star Region. This place would definitely not be possible without the government's endorsement. Moreover, Chun Ming's eyes lingered on a brand new Centurion class ship for sale for a while. The military should also be involved. The ship was definitely not paralyzed or abandoned, but was transported here as soon as it left the factory. Although other companies also have ships for sale here, because the company's ships are already sold to the outside world, it is not sure whether any company is really involved. After passing through the most prosperous area of the black market for selling spaceships, the place behind is almost the same as the place Chun Ming passed before. If he continues to look, he will spend too much time on the road. So Chun Ming turned back to the place where the spaceships were sold and started from the opposite direction to confirm what he needed step by step. First of all, the spaceship must not be bought because Chun Ming is actually okay with spaceships at present. Three destroyers plus six frigates are enough to deal with many situations. If there are more, it will really be impossible to take them. But Chun Ming thinks it is necessary to add new weapons. Because the weapons he has are a bit biased. The energy weapons on the medium-sized bearing points include ion beams and tactical laser cannons. The live ammunition weapons include the ripper, the noise cannon, and the assault chain cannon. The small energy weapon has only one instantaneous HPD laser cannon, which is also a point defense weapon. The best small live ammunition weapon is the military light needle. Others, such as the light assault cannon and the Vulcan point defense cannon on the mule class, are better than ordinary civilian weapons, but only slightly better. 
Then, add an electromagnetic javelin converted from a single soldier weapon. The remaining missile type weapons. There are two types of small missile weapons. The Fire Snake focuses on locking missiles, can adjust its trajectory by itself, track the tail flame of the spacecraft and hit the engine, causing the engine to be paralyzed or even destroyed. There is also a death torpedo, but this thing is not very practical. Although there is only one medium-sized one, it is at least a cyber SRM missile with extremely strong shield-breaking ability on the Gladiator class. In general, these are the weapons Chun Ming currently has. It looks like a lot covering all the required combat environments. But in fact, there is still a lack of a weapon that can end the spacecraft when breaking the shield of the enemy spacecraft. Energy weapons are definitely not included. Because energy weapons rely on excellent output and radiation amplification ratio to gain advantages. Unless the energy output exceeds a limit such as the tachyon spear, it is still difficult to have a strong destructive ability. So the end of the spacecraft can only rely on live ammunition and missiles. At least destroyer and escort level spacecraft can only rely on these two to end the spacecraft in most cases. Almost all the weapons Chun Ming currently has are used to break shields and armor. But what you need to do to destroy a ship is completely different from breaking shields and armor. Weapons that are good at armor penetration may not be good for the structure of the spacecraft. For example, noise. This is a multi-barrel revolver cannon that fires small high-speed armor-piercing shells. While ensuring the strong effect of kinetic weapons on shields, it also has a strong ability to break armor. Then, there is nothing else. The design of armor-piercing shells determines that they can only penetrate armor and cause certain damage to the outer structure of the spacecraft and it is difficult to cause sufficient damage to the interior of the spacecraft. Another weapon, the Ripper, is better than the noisy armor-piercing shells because it uses armor-piercing high-explosive shells. However, because it is an armor-piercing high-explosive shell, it cannot compare with pure single-type weapons in terms of actual destructive power and armor-piercing ability. The shield-breaking ability is also somewhat poor due to its own armor-piercing design. Therefore, the Ripper is okay in dealing with pirates with weak armor and fragile structures, but it will not be very effective against targets with heavy armor and shields. Unless you fight with pirates, the possible result in the end is that the shield and armor of the enemy spacecraft are broken, but there is no way to completely destroy the spacecraft and the enemy and give the enemy a chance to breathe. Just like the time when Chun Ming fought with the pirates before. Because the Centurion suffered a frontal fire attack from six spacecraft, it could only open the damping field defense and could not use the Ripper to counterattack. As a result, Chun Ming could only rely on the excellent performance of the Fighter Kai itself and the radiation energy system that could almost catch up with the Destroyer and the shield breaking ability of the Cyber SRM missile and the shield suppression ability of the Ion Beam to defeat the shield of the Corsair Mule. Then the problem occurred when dealing with the engine. Chun Ming could only rely on the overload power grid and the high energy focusing device to strengthen the ion beam to barely destroy the mule engine, and it was not even destroyed. In addition, the Fighter Kai and the Centurion were only one spaceship, and it was very easy to be restrained. In the future, when there are more spaceships in a fight, there will be no chance for Chun Ming to attack the engine from the flank. If the engine cannot be paralyzed, then the termination ability of the spaceship Chun Ming has will be even worse. Even dealing with pirates with a little surprise will cause problems. This further proves that Chun Ming is currently lacking a terminal type weapon that can quickly damage the structure of the spacecraft. Although the Reaper torpedo can be considered a type, and it is also very famous. But its number is small, and its actual combat effectiveness is also a mystery. Whether it can be used depends entirely on luck. In fact, Lude's self-destruct ship is very suitable for terminal attacks on spacecraft, but the cost of the self-destruct ship is higher than any other means of attack combined. At most, it can be used as a trump card. It is impossible to rely entirely on the self-destruct ship to fight. So after Chun Ming actually fought and noticed the problems in the battle, he urgently needed this type of excellent terminal weapon. And Chun Ming's terminal notes, at this time, did record some valuable weapons. Among them, there is just one weapon that meets all of Chun Ming's needs. 
Tachyon Technologies Concentrated Charge Anti-Aircraft Gun Semi-Energy and Semi-Live Ammunition Weapons Each warhead is a grenade loaded with special charge materials. The warhead is quickly charged when fired. And when it actually hits, there is not only the explosion impact of the grenade, but also the arc generated when the internal charge material is destroyed. The grenade alone has a strong killing power on the structure of the spacecraft. The arc generated by the charge material can have a great impact on the shield. Although its effect on armor is average, Chun Ming cannot expect a weapon that can break shields, armor, and destroy structures. Being able to have an additional effect on shields on the basis of ensuring strong destruction of structures is already the best weapon Chun Ming has found. It just makes up for Chun Ming's current situation. However, this type of energy-focused charge anti-aircraft gun is a weapon installed on a medium-sized load-bearing point, and the price is quite outrageous. One gun costs $5 million, and two guns cost tens of millions. Chun Ming's current net worth only allows him to buy two guns. Who can bear to have his assets reduced by one-third in an instant? If it weren't for the fact that Chun Ming didn't need additional spare ammunition, the price would only be higher. Moreover, Chun Ming can't modify this weapon developed by Tachyon Technology at all, so he can only use it. Because the weapon design ideas of Tachyon Technology are different from the low-cost mass production of Cinda Company, Chun Ming can find those designs of Cinda Company's spacecraft weapons that are actively weakened to ensure mass production. But Tachyon Technology's weapons are designed according to cutting-edge weapons, and Chun Ming can't find any place where he can enhance them. This is actually good news, indicating that Tachyon Technology's weapons are at least guaranteed in quality. And it also made Chun Ming realize his shortcomings in technology again. Not only cutting-edge technology, but also the technology of energy weapons and semi-energy weapons commonly used by Tachyon Technology. So Chun Ming had better find a way to learn more technology to prevent the situation of being blind to technology in the future. It just so happens that all he has to do now is to spend a few minutes to refurbish the weapons every day, so he definitely has time. Since he has to learn this, Chun Ming can actually learn some more advanced knowledge. For example, cruiser level knowledge. Chun Ming has never been in contact with cruiser level spacecraft and has only learned theoretical knowledge, but he thinks that he should have a day in the future to control a cruiser, so it is not a loss to learn it. In addition, Chun Ming can actually learn the technology from Yu Hui. However, the gap between Yu Hui's technology and that of humans is a bit large. At most, it can be used as a reference, and it may come in handy when modifying Yu Hui's spacecraft. Just when Chun Ming had a lot of ideas in his mind because of buying things, Old Wu suddenly patted him on the shoulder and said, What are you thinking about? Sign the order. Chun Ming suddenly pulled himself out of his thoughts, said, Oh, and sign the contract with the government's seal and endorsement. The weapons will be delivered to the designated location within an hour. The merchant will contact Chen Ming at that time. After walking out of the store selling shaped charge anti-aircraft guns, Chen Ming began to think about the previous problem again. As he was thinking, he suddenly asked Lao Wu next to him, I'm thinking, is there any way to learn new technology? Do you still need to learn this technology now? There are still many people with better technology than me. If I don't learn, my life will be like this. I don't want this. Then go to the company. Lao Wu realized that he said the wrong thing as soon as he said it and quickly added, Just ignore what I said. Chun Ming is from the company. The professional technology above is not accessible to ordinary employees. And now the attitude of the company is not clear. He is just talking about something irrelevant. Lao Wu touched his head with a little embarrassment, thought about it, and said directly, In fact, there are other technical books. When I was learning technology, before, I left a bunch of professional books. Chun Ming waved his hand casually and said, You and I are from the same place. I have everything you have. Seeing Chun Ming's reaction, Old Wu smiled and said, Who said that? I changed jobs from Speed Zone. Although some technical books with high confidentiality levels are not available, some technical books with lower levels are still available. Chun Ming suddenly became energetic, just like a pillow was sent to him when he was sleepy. But he also had some things he didn't understand and asked, Your terminal was not checked? 
This happened many years ago, and I was an apprentice at that time. I changed jobs and handed in the company's terminal. I was released after a personal inspection. I can only say that they didn't check it very carefully. Then you didn't sell it? Do you dare to sell it? No, but I think you can sell it. Old Wu stared at Chin Ming with his eyes wide open, but he knew that he was a profiteer at ordinary times, so he really couldn't blemish Chin Ming. Tisk, forget it. Old Wu smacked his lips, took out the terminal, and sent a package document to Chin Ming point to point, saying, It's okay to show you these things in private, just don't spread it out. After receiving the file, Chin Ming took a quick look and confirmed that the contents were all genuine. Although the basics were similar to the way Sheen Da Company educated new employees, there would be special technical teaching from Tachyon Technology later. It was very helpful for his current situation. Chun Ming turned off the terminal and looked up and down at Old Wu. Old Wu couldn't help asking, What are you doing? Chun Ming suddenly felt that the saying, You can't judge a person by his appearance, was still true. However, knowing Old Wu's character of hitting the snake on the pole, Chun Ming still said, it's okay, just take a look at you, and let's go on. The things have been bought, but Chun Ming still wants to see more places in the black market. Although he can't afford it, it doesn't cost money to see it. Especially those spaceships in the center of the black market. Chun Ming is still quite interested. Especially when Chun Ming passed by just now, he also saw a military hammerhead class destroyer. This kind of spaceship was selected by Sheen Da Company when the military was bidding. If it was selected by the military, the quality can be said to be very good. And Chun Ming likes Sheen Da Company's spaceships as a whole, mainly because they are easy to use and easy to modify. However, the price of this Hammerhead class ship is 130 million. It can only be said that the price of the military grade is actually similar. Chun Ming can't even afford a fraction now. There is another ship that he is very interested in. It was a storm class frigate of Tachyon technology that was seized by Yu Hui which Gamma A had heard about before. It is equipped with an unmanned fighter installed with the Terminator core and has a battle situation grasp ability that is almost similar to Yu Hui AI. However, the price of this frigate is even more expensive than the Hammerhead class destroyer. 170 million. Chun Ming took a look at the number of people watching the spaceship outside the isolation zone and the 20 million yuan in his hand and knew that this ship was probably not related to him. Unless Chun Ming is busy at the space station for a while, he may earn enough money to buy these two spaceships. But now he can only watch. Chun Ming had no desire to buy at this time, so he walked in the black market with the idea of seeing more good things. And this idea suddenly reminded him of something. Chun Ming turned to Old Wu who was playing with the terminal and said, Old Wu, do you know if there is an auction here? Old Wu looked up at Chin Ming and said, How did you think of an auction? That's how I thought of it. Old Wu lowered his head and said, There were indeed many years ago, during the years when the empire's development slowed down. At that time, explorers often took the initiative to explore the galaxies outside the empire's territory and brought back many rare things. Auctions were very popular at that time, but recently, I haven't heard of anything worth auctioning. And to be honest, there is really nothing rare and non-controlled in our marginal galaxy to auction. Old Wu suddenly stopped talking halfway. He quickly clicked on the terminal and said, Wait a minute, there really is. The main auction item is the armor-piercing destroyer. I haven't heard of a spacecraft. Take a look. Old Wu reached out and handed over his terminal, which displayed information about an auction website. Tomorrow the government will hold an auction in a Colonial Development History Exhibition Hall next to the Black Market, using a large conference hall and venue there. Although the main auction item was not introduced in detail, Chen Ming could tell at a glance that the design of this armor-piercing spaceship was definitely related to the Shinda Company. Old Wu had worked in the repair factory for so many years, and he could obviously see the characteristics of the spaceship design. He pointed to the armor-piercing on the terminal and asked, this should be the company's newly designed spaceship model, right? Why is it being sold at the auction? Who knows, but I think this spaceship is interesting. If it's interesting, let's go and take a look. It opens tomorrow, so we should have time to go and take a look. With the money you have now, 
you should be eligible to enter. Chun Ming certainly had no objection to this, but he was thinking about more things. Of course it's okay for me to go, but won't it be boring for you to follow me, Old Wu? I'm very interested in these spaceship weapons, but Old Wu, you usually seem... Old Wu looked at Chun Ming with a strange face and said, I'm also interested in spaceships. Who said I'm not interested? Which man would not be interested in spaceships? I usually like to drink and have fun, but I don't just like to drink and have fun. Don't look down on me. Speaking of this, Old Wu suddenly showed a wretched smile on his face. Do you want to go with me tonight to have fun? Chun Ming decisively refused. No, I'm not interested, but if you want to go, Old Wu, I'll reimburse you. So good. That's it. After leaving the black market, Chun Ming originally planned to find a hotel to stay in. But when Old Wu heard what Chun Ming said, he said hello and ran away. He looked like he was not going to find a decent place to stay tonight. Chun Ming had no reason to stop him, so he simply didn't look for a hotel. He took some time to return to the colony space station via the space elevator and went back to live on the ship. By the way, he also received the two shaped charge anti aircraft guns that had been sent to the temporary cargo storage center on the space station and sent them to the fighter's modified ship, intending to replace them after leaving the space station. After finishing this matter, Chun Ming didn't wander around the space station, but went directly back to the iron ore. He took out the terminal and began to check the information of tomorrow's auction. Although there was no overly detailed information, the situation of the auction items could be roughly seen by just looking at the brief introduction. The items sold at tomorrow's auction are basically some experimental or test weapons or equipment for spacecraft that have not been publicly sold. There are items from different manufacturers. Such items should be sold to match the new armor-piercing class. Chun Ming did see some things on the list that made him jealous. As for the price, it can only be said that participation is important. If Chun Ming is willing to spend a little money, he should be able to bid on one or two items. But he doesn't want to be penniless, so he'd better wait until the time comes to see it in person before deciding. Chun Ming quickly wrote down the list of auction items and closed the auction website. He didn't rush to rest, but went to the engine room, came to the spiritual stone that has now become a lie. Although Chun Ming didn't dwell too much on the familiar figure he saw that day, but now that he was free at night, Chun Ming recalled and found that the familiar figure seemed to be very similar to the man who was shot dead when he touched the lie stone. He felt that this kind of thing still needed to be clarified. So Chun Ming directly opened the address book and sent a communication request to his boss. All colonies and space stations within the empire are covered by superluminal communication technology, so it is not impossible to contact the boss. The communication was quickly connected, and Chun Ming said directly, Excuse me, boss, I have something to ask you. The boss said in a rather casual tone, I am very idle every day, so I won't bother you. What do you want to say? My spiritual stone has changed. The boss's voice gradually became more energetic from lazy, and asked, Change? What change? My whispering stone pattern has become more distorted, and the influence of the whispering is stronger. When I touch it, I will also see an illusion, an illusion of a person being shot dead. The boss suddenly asked with a hint of curiosity, What does that person look like? A middle-aged man with a mustache, quite white and thin. Oh, I thought it would be me or you. Chen Ming asked in confusion. What do you mean? It means literally. In simple terms, what you encountered is that there is some resonance between the spirit stone and the dead pirate. Resonance? Yes, although you have seen fewer spirit stones, you should be able to guess that the spirit stone actually corresponds to human consciousness to a certain extent. Human consciousness includes a lot, such as personality, emotions, thoughts, desires, etc. Like my gentleness, it corresponds to the gentle personality, and your whisper corresponds to the crazy and irritable emotions that can make people feel. Although they look different, they are both very extreme, extreme gentleness, extreme whispering, or irritability. Can you understand what I mean? Chun Ming digested what his boss said a little bit and said, Yes, the spirit stone corresponds to the extreme consciousness of people, 
and being gentle to the extreme is definitely not a good thing. Well, you can understand it this way. In short, the spirit stone itself represents extremes, and once something of the same extreme appears next to the spirit stone, it will affect the spirit stone with similar effects. I think it should be the resentment or madness in the pirate's heart when he died, and the emotional consciousness and whispering. The spirit stone resonates, so your whispering stone will change. By the way, this situation will only occur when there is psychic power, and ordinary people will not be able to use it no matter how strong their emotions are. Maybe the pirate has some psychic talent, or maybe he has been in contact with psychic items. In short, the extreme emotions he had when he died affected your stone. That's about it. The boss paused for a moment and then said, In fact, what I can't understand is why the person you saw was not you or me, but the middle-aged man you said. But this should be a good thing, which means you can try to do what you see according to the illusion. Chun Ming asked in surprise, Do as the illusion tells you? Why? Well, how should I put it? The effect of your whispering spiritual stone is also changing, right? Yes, the effect is getting stronger. As long as you find that person and kill that person, the illusion will disappear and the spiritual energy that constitutes the illusion will become part of the spiritual stone itself. This extreme resonance of consciousness will be completely unified and completely integrated into the spiritual stone, continuing to increase the strength of the spiritual stone's effect. Chun Ming glanced at the liar stone placed next to him, and he couldn't imagine what kind of tormenting ability it would have after its effect continued to increase. Does this person really exist? Also, if the effect of the stone becomes stronger, can I still keep touching the whispering stone, as you said before? The boss answered Chun Ming's questions one by one. If the effect of the spirit stone is stronger, you can just keep touching it for a shorter time. As long as you don't carry it all the time, there will be no problem. You are a psychic. As for whether this person really exists, I ask you, do you know this person? No. Do you think you can construct a complete image of such a person with all kinds of details just by imagination? No. That's it. This person is actually the object of the pirate's greatest resentment when he was dying. That's why I'm wondering why it's not you or me. I really don't understand. Forget it. Anyway, as long as you follow his social network, you will definitely find this person. The boss told Chun Ming all the benefits of following the illusion, but Chun Ming still had some questions. What if I don't do this? The boss was not surprised that Chun Ming had such an idea and said, the power of resonance will gradually fade and it will disappear completely after a period of time. By then, your spirit stone will only have the enhanced effect of the resonance produced at the moment and the extra part will disappear with the disappearance of the illusion. In other words, there is no actual disadvantage. I understand. Well, it's up to you to do it. I'm just watching, um, explaining the situation and giving you some advice. You can find me if you have this kind of thing in the future. I like doing this kind of thing. If you want to find someone with specific clues, Chun Ming immediately thought of a suitable person and said, I can ask Lao Wu. He should know where to start. Yes, it's a good idea to find him. That's it. Thank you, boss. Don't be so polite. If you have any questions, keep contacting me. The communication ended. Chun Ming threw the terminal away and prepared to rest. Lao Wu said during the day that he knew where to sell intelligence here. So the intelligence dealers here must know one or two. It shouldn't be a big problem to check the identity and background of this pirate through the intelligence dealers especially when this pirate has become a corpse. However, Lao Wu ran out to have fun, so he can only ask before or after the auction tomorrow. If he finds that this middle-aged man is easy to deal with, he will spend some time to find a way to get rid of him. When Chun Ming thought of this, he suddenly became a little dazed. He found that he no longer seemed to have any aversion to killing, even if he didn't know whether the other person was a good person or a bad person. The indifference of the surrounding environment to the rules was affecting him, and he was getting further and further away from the prosperous star field where rules and order coexisted. He was getting further and further away from the peaceful and stable life he once wanted. But it didn't matter. Chun Ming suddenly made up his mind. 
When he relied on his ability to get everything he had now, it was already difficult for him to return to the prosperous star field. If you want to stay in a place like the marginal star field for a long time, you must never follow the rules of the prosperous star field. He must never give up an opportunity to gain benefits because of some ideas within the rules. Unless Chun Ming trusts enough people and a coveted benefit is placed at both ends of the road, he needs to consider the trade-off between benefits and people. At that time, Chun Ming was not reluctant to use benefits in exchange for friends he could trust. Chun Ming is an orphan, and he has few friends since he was a child, almost none. So he would value the friends he already has. But what does he have to do with other strangers? Killing this middle-aged man can allow Chun Ming's spirit stone to continue to be strengthened. And in the illusion, there is another spirit stone in the middle-aged man's pocket. If the middle-aged man is as real as the boss said, then this spirit stone is also very likely to exist. And this spirit stone is an unknown spirit stone. There is a possibility that it is gentle like the boss's spirit stone. A possible existence with the function of calming people and erasing distracting thoughts, gentle spirit stone, it is impossible for Chun Ming to give up because of the rules. Chun Ming closed his eyes and gradually settled the thoughts in his mind, waiting for the arrival of the next day. While Chun Ming was resting, after having a good meal and drinking some wine, Lao Wu found a foot washing city according to his experience of coming here before. Such places are not lacking anywhere. After all, the construction of the colony cannot be born from scratch with only a few people. It must be a large-scale population migration based on the stated dividends. These migrated populations are not necessarily high-quality populations. There are always some ordinary people to fill the gaps in the foundation. When there are more people, competition will naturally appear. Once a person cannot compete with others, his social status will naturally sink to a suitable place. Even in the most advanced interstellar era, there will never be a shortage of people at the bottom. So places like foot washing cities will naturally never be lacking. Of course, this has nothing to do with Lao Wu, whose mind is full of asterisk waste at this time. Since Chun Ming said he would reimburse him, he was not polite. Before starting the meal, he had to have a proper meal. Old Wu said yes at the front desk and found a recliner to lie on. Just as he was about to close his eyes and enjoy it, he suddenly saw an acquaintance out of the corner of his eye. A middle-aged man with a mustache walked to the other side of the foot massage parlor surrounded by three people. Old Wu whistled and said, Wow, you were so awesome today. Wasn't it the same before? The middle-aged man turned his head to look at the source of the voice and said in surprise, Old Wu, why did you come to this place? I came here to do something. The middle-aged man frowned slightly and asked, What is it? It's just a small matter. I've finished it and will leave tomorrow. The middle-aged man felt a little more relaxed and didn't want to chat with Old Wu. He said as he walked, Then I wish you a safe journey. Good luck. In fact, Old Wu wanted to ask the middle-aged man about the group of pirates that Chen Ming had killed before. But Old Wu felt that they came here to pay the bounty for these pirates, and it was not good to ask someone who had close contact with the pirates directly. And Old Wu remembered that the middle-aged man with a mustache and those pirates were not just in the relationship of intelligence trading. The pirates got the Luddite from the middle-aged man. If he brings up this topic and angers someone who has something to do with Ludzwijing, that's not what Old Wu wants to see. Time flies, and it's the next day. Chun Ming met Old Wu early in the morning outside the Colonial Development History Exhibition Hall, where the auction was going to be held. After arriving, Chun Ming found that there were a lot of guards here, a lot of them, which gave Chun Ming the feeling that there were more than those at the government building. It seems that they are all here to protect this auction. So after the meeting, Chun Ming was not in a hurry to bring up the intelligence for the time being, and he watched the auction first. The identity and entry qualification review for the auction does not need to be conducted on site. And it is also quite simple. Just confirm that there is money in the card on the auction website. Then verify on site whether the identity registered on the website and the terminal can match each other and nothing else is needed. Although it is indeed very convenient and the identity protection of the auctioneer is also very good, the security of the auction seems to be a bit problematic. However, 
It seems normal to have more guards responsible for the security of the auction. Chun Ming understood the auction organizer's train of thought. He barely made it into the auction with the assets of over 20 million in his card. There were still many people in the Star Region capital who could gather tens of millions of movable assets. When Chun Ming took Old Wu in, there were only a few hundred people in the large conference hall of the exhibition hall. But it was hard to say how many people really came in person. Chun Ming quickly found the seat arranged on the auction website. The official list of items was placed at everyone's seat. It listed all the items for today and their detailed introduction. This naturally included a detailed introduction to the main item, the armor-piercing spacecraft. In the conference hall, Chun Ming could also follow the one-way glass wall next to it, which was obviously recently renovated, and see the armor-piercing spacecraft that was placed in the empty exhibition hall next door in advance. The armor-piercing spacecraft had a spear-like appearance and a sharp momentum, which attracted Chen Ming's eyes deeply. What attracted Chen Ming's attention next was the biggest feature of the armor-piercing spacecraft. Its spear tip is occupied by a large load-bearing point, a large load-bearing point that can be equipped with large weapons. Generally speaking, only cruisers can support the radiation energy growth and energy consumption of large weapons. If a destroyer is to carry large weapons, these two problems need to be solved urgently and a lot of new technologies must be supported to achieve this. The armor-piercing class released by Shinda Company now may have completely solved these two problems. No wonder so many people are interested in this spaceship. Moreover, Chunming also found that this armor-piercing class uses the relatively high-value Baiyun steel composite armor. Although this material, which is largely derived from the mechanical family, is often used by advanced spaceships. But Chun Ming remembered that when Shinda Company designed the spaceship, it would try to control the proportion of high-grade metal materials used in order to mass-produce it. Now that this material is used on the armor that accounts for a very large proportion of the material on the spaceship, it can be seen that the company really attaches great importance to this armor-piercing class. With this armor-piercing class next to it, Chun Ming basically has no interest in other items at the auction. Even though the auction will start soon, Chun Ming's attention has always stayed on this armor-piercing class, thinking about whether there is any way to get in touch with it. However, the isolation belts and the large number of guards next to the armor-piercing class forced Chun Ming to give up this idea. But at least it was still worth watching. While Chun Ming was staring at the armor-piercing class, the items at the auction were being auctioned one by one. Two hours later, the auction finally came to the last item, the armor-piercing class destroyer. But before the last item was officially auctioned, the auction opened the closed area next door where the armor-piercing class was placed, allowing people present to go over and take a close look at the armor-piercing class. Many people did not move, but many people got up and went through the small door next to them. Chun Ming and Lao Wu were naturally among them. Both of them were attracted by the absolutely violent large load-bearing point of the armor-piercing class. However, as Chun Ming approached the armor-piercing class, he suddenly realized that there was a trace of danger around him. Chun Ming immediately became alert and looked around the crowd around him. And in the crowd rushing towards the armor-piercing class, Chun Ming suddenly saw that person. In the illusion brought by the liar stone, Chun Ming saw the middle-aged man who was shot in the head. At this time, the middle-aged man's hand was in the pocket of his formal velvet suit, as if holding something. And when Chun Ming saw him, the vague sense of danger suddenly became clear. Chun Ming's hand subconsciously reached to his waist, wanting to touch the holster on the protective suit. But Chun Ming stopped before he really did it. Because once he pulled out the gun, he would definitely not have time to shoot and would be shot into a sieve by the fully armed guards around him. The individual weapons made with current technology are much more sophisticated than the civilian spacecraft weapons that Chun Ming has seen. It is definitely not difficult to accurately hit the target in the crowd. The same is true for the middle-aged man. If he dares to do anything wrong, he will definitely be besieged by the guards around him. However, Chun Ming always believed that his sense of danger would not deceive people. So he quickly pulled Lao Wu away from him and fell to the back of the team, watching the armor-breaking class at close range. Just when Chun Ming saw him and pulled Old Wu to slow down his pace. 
The middle-aged man seemed to have noticed Chen Ming here, but he didn't look at Chen Ming, but at Old Wu. There seemed to be a half-second hesitation on his face, but it disappeared immediately. Then he looked determined and clenched his hands hidden in his pockets. The next moment, something happened that Chen Ming was extremely surprised. A wave of mental pulses that Chen Ming had experienced many times suddenly spread out from the middle-aged man. It swept through the people participating in the auction, swept through him, and swept through the guards on the periphery, and even penetrated the walls of the exhibition hall, and swept through the people outside the exhibition hall. Chun Ming could feel that the intensity of this mental pulse was quite high. Although this level did not cause any impact on him who was now accustomed to whispers and mental pulses, it was absolutely unbearable for ordinary people. Just as he expected, chaos and screams broke out in the exhibition hall in an instant, and people present fell down in groups. The guards on guard around could not withstand the influence of the mental pulse at all, and fell to the ground one by one, losing their ability to fight. Only a few guards were still struggling, but they could not hold on for long under the influence of the mental pulse, and they fell into a coma. Old Wu also fell to the ground with a painful expression on his face. But Chen Ming was stunned for a moment when he saw Old Wu for the first time, and then pretended to be like this. Moreover, before Old Wu fell, he pulled Chen Ming's trouser legs and made Chen Ming lie on the ground and pretend to be dead. Obviously, he was not affected by the mental pulse at all. Although Chen Ming was curious about how Old Wu, an ordinary person who was definitely not a psychic, could resist the influence of the mental pulse. However, he still fell down under the push of Old Wu and mixed with him in the crowd of people who fell down. Hundreds of people in the entire exhibition hall fell down soon. After a short and violent noise, the exhibition hall suddenly fell into silence. Most of the people inside and outside the exhibition hall and nearby fell down in the heart pulse. Even if a guard sent a distress signal before falling down, it would take at least a few minutes for the nearest support to arrive. In these few minutes, the exhibition hall was under the control of the few people who were still standing. However, these few people did not include the middle-aged man who caused all this. He fell to the ground like everyone else. But Chun Ming estimated that the middle-aged man should be pretending to be unconscious like him. The other few people who were still standing looked around and confirmed that there were no people still standing and suddenly showed a fanatical and excited look on their faces. They suddenly ran, past the people lying on the ground, and rushed to the armor-piercing level parked next to them. Chun Ming, lying on the ground, whispered to Old Wu, who was also paying close attention to the situation. What do they want to do? I think you will know soon. Old Wu said, and began to crawl on the ground carefully, pulling Chun Ming to crawl to the support column next to him. The attention of the few people still standing on the scene was obviously on the armor-piercing level, and no one noticed the two people next to them. Just when Old Wu took Chun Ming to hide behind the support column, the man who rushed to the front suddenly stiffened. A bloody hole appeared on the back of his head, and he fell to the ground. Chun Ming slowly turned his head and saw a guard who was barely leaning against the wall of the exhibition hall with the gun in his hand pointing forward. His hands were shaking, and he was obviously in great pain. Just as he was about to fire the second shot, the body that he had shot and fell suddenly exploded violently. The violent shock made him fall to the ground completely, and he could no longer stand up. Along with the shock, the surging air waves, smoke, and dust, and a large number of things shattered by the explosion hit the support column where Chun Ming was hiding. There were more miscellaneous things flying past Chun Ming. Fuck! Chun Ming's heartbeat almost slowed down. Fortunately, he had noticed the danger before and deliberately fell behind the crowd, and Old Wu had pulled him behind the support column in advance. Otherwise, he would definitely be affected by the bomb now. Wait, Old Wu pulled him in advance? Chun Ming pinched Old Wu who was lying next to him pretending to be dead and said, Is this the fucking Lud's left path? You'd better explain to me what's going on. Old Wu quickly explained when he heard Chun Ming's question. I do know him. And then? Nothing. I just know him. I met him when I was doing intelligence business. I know he is from Ludzwijing. I know he has been making money by using Zwijing's name and occasionally providing some intelligence to Zwijing. 
I have no intersection with him in other aspects. Chun Ming suddenly remembered the previous things and said, I remember you didn't even look at the specific information about the pirate before and directly said that the pirate was related to Zhuojing. Yes, I know that the pirate has a deep connection with him, but I really don't know about other things. When I knew him before, he was very afraid of death. There is no reason for him to personally do this kind of thing for Zhuojing. I also want to know why he would do a terrorist attack when he was full. Chun Ming stared at old Wu's face for a few seconds and chose to believe him. Because in this way, the problem that Chun Ming had been struggling with was indeed answered. That is why the pirate leader hated this person the most, not him and the boss. It was obvious that he gave the pirate leader the wrong information, causing him to attack the caravan that was delivering goods to the boss's colony. Then he called for the boss's revenge, that is, to let Chun Ming go and bring him back. The mustache had been in contact with Lao Wu, and Lao Wu had been working in the repair shop for several years. That is to say, the mustache must have been working as an intelligence dealer for many years, and it is not right to make such a low-level mistake as getting the intelligence wrong. This is a deliberate pitfall for the pirate leader. Although the specific reason why the mustache did this is unknown, it is probably related to this terrorist attack. It may be that he was worried that the pirate leader knew something he shouldn't know, so he caused a fatal disaster. Of course, this is just Chun Ming's guess. The specific situation may have to be asked to the person involved, but the person is dead, so there is no point in asking these questions. It's a pity that if Chun Ming hadn't rejected Lao Wu's proposal to meet the local intelligence dealer yesterday, he should have been able to meet him in advance. Maybe Chun Ming could have shot him dead at that time and completed the illusion requirement of the falsehood stone. But who could have thought of this? Wait a minute. Chun Ming was suddenly stunned. Isn't this the best opportunity to kill the mustache? All the people present fell down because of the mental pulse. The terrorist only wanted to blow up the spaceship. The mustache also chose to hide in the crowd to hide himself. As long as Chun Ming followed the position where the mustache just stood in his memory, it should not be difficult to kill him. Chun Ming's hand reached to his waist and pressed on the pistol that he had modified a lot. He slowly pulled the gun out of the holster and opened the safety. Prepare to set off after the aftermath of the explosion subsided. But something unexpected happened immediately. At the same time as the bomb of the terrorist who was killed by the only guard who had not completely fallen down exploded. Among the remaining three Lud left terrorists, there was another terrorist who was killed by his companion's explosion. The left terrorist probably installed a heart rate monitor or something like that on his body, connected to the bomb. If the person dies and the heart stops beating, the bomb will be detonated. Therefore, the second explosion occurred. This time the explosion occurred closer to Chen Ming, and the violent shock wave blew past the support column that Chen Ming was leaning on, and more debris and body fragments continued to hit Chen Ming behind him. After the shock wave passed, Chen Ming carefully poked his head out and found that cracks began to appear on the support columns closest to the explosion. The ceiling also looked shaky, and several nearby exhibition halls could collapse at any time. At the same time, a worse situation occurred with the second explosion. The power was cut off in the exhibition hall. Although the first explosion shattered some of the lighting equipment inside the exhibition hall, not all of it. There were always some lighting equipment that survived and provided lighting for the exhibition hall. But now, after the power outage, the exhibition hall was completely plunged into darkness. I could only rely on the light of the newly rising stars outside to barely see the situation inside the exhibition hall. Chun Ming adapted a little, suddenly noticed that the power outage was not only the lighting system, but also the cameras in every corner of the exhibition hall had stopped working. And it was even earlier than the power outage, as if it had stopped working when the mind pulse appeared. Even if the cameras in this public area used the same line as the ordinary lighting system, they should have power failure detection devices to be activated when necessary. But now there is none. Chun Ming guessed that this should be caused by the people from Zhuijing. There should also be people from Zhuijing inside the exhibition hall. The surveillance of this scene will probably be deleted later. No wonder the man with the mustache dared to come to the scene in person to carry out the terrorist attack. However, 
the monitoring situation seemed to be okay for Chun Ming. At least if Zhu Jing deleted the video, he would also delete the record of Chun Ming that was completely unaffected by the mental pulse. At the same time, it could also cover up what Chun Ming wanted to do next. When the aftermath of the second explosion was about to end, Chun Ming slightly identified the direction inside the dim exhibition hall and prepared to leave. However, accidents often follow one after another. Another mental pulse suddenly broke out. Although Chun Ming was also not affected, the guard who had just barely climbed up fell down completely. And some other guards who had already shown signs of waking up also fell into a coma again. Except for the few people from Lu Zhuijing who were prepared in advance, plus Chun Ming and Lao Wu, there was no one who was still conscious at the scene. Chun Ming's eyes immediately locked on the direction from which the mental pulse came. Although the environment was relatively dim, he could see the situation there clearly. The man with a mustache climbed up from the unconscious people around him, frowning and staring at the mechanical device in his hand that had begun to smoke. This is the source of the mental pulse. Mustache didn't want to use it a second time, but this time there was a person with outstanding willpower among ordinary people in the guards, and the quality of the others was also beyond his expectations. In order to avoid unnecessary trouble, some things are better not to be saved. He stuffed the smoking device into his pocket, and when he thought that everyone had fallen, he said to the remaining two terrorists who were still alive, Get up, God is still waiting for you. The two terrorists lying on the ground heard Mustache's words and immediately climbed up as if they were stimulated by something. Continue to rush towards the armor-piercing destroyer, the crystallization of human technology. Only Mustache was left standing at a safe distance. Chun Ming found an opportunity, half crouched up, held the pistol and aimed at the position of Mustache, slowly moved his feet and prepared to shoot after getting close to a safe distance. But just as Chin Ming took a step forward, Old Wu suddenly grabbed him and whispered, What are you doing? Kill him. Of course I can see that you want to kill him. Are you good enough with your gun? Chin Ming hesitated for a moment. He knew his gun skills very well. He could only shoot with his luck at a distance of 10 meters. But Chun Ming didn't want to give up because of this and said, I want to give it a try. Old Wu asked in confusion, Is it necessary? Zhu Jing just wants to blow up the armor-piercing class. We don't need to take the risk to help others protect the spacecraft. He won't pay you. Chun Ming's steps that had been taken out were retracted behind the load-bearing column. He said to Old Wu, You should be able to guess the effect of my psychic power, right? Probably controlling the spacecraft? Yes, I can control all the spacecrafts, even if they're destroyed and only a frame is left. Kill them and I can try to contact the armor-piercing ship, and then control it. Did you see the price of the armor-breaker auction, just now? 700 million, the reserve price. Old Wu swallowed unconsciously. He knew very well what 700 million meant, but he still said, It's useless if you can't get the money. This isn't the capital of the star field. How can you drive the ship away? I don't need to drive it away. As long as the ship is under my control, it will always be under my control. As long as this armor breaker really works one day, you should be able to guess what will happen then. Old Wu doesn't need to guess what will happen then. As long as the armor breaker is alone or close to being alone, Chen Ming can directly let the armor breaker enter the hyperspace channel and forcibly escape control beyond everyone's expectations. It's not so easy to find a ship that has entered the hyperspace channel. Just find a corner without a star and squat there. It may take a lifetime to find it. Thinking of this, Old Wu couldn't help but sigh and said, Psychics are really perverts. Chun Ming ignored Old Wu's perverted adjective and said, Okay, I won't talk nonsense with you. I have to hurry up. Otherwise, if he finds me or the support troops behind me come, I will have no chance. Chun Ming crouched down and prepared to use the dim environment to get close to the mustache. But Old Wu suddenly grabbed him and said, Wait a minute, I didn't say I won't help you. Chun Ming snorted, hid behind the load-bearing column again, handed him the pistol, and said, Then you come. Old Wu seemed to have some shining eyes and took Chun Ming's pistol, shook it, gestured to the air, and said, Retro design, you have good taste. But I can't use this kind of gun. He said and threw the gun back and said, 
and I have one myself. Old Wu took out a pistol from his arms that was obviously more advanced than the one Sean Ming modified himself, with an instrument that looked very compact on it. He tapped the instrument lightly and said, Automatic locking system. If caught, you will be in jail for at least 20 years. It cost me a lot of money to get it. Leave it to me. Old Wu leaned out half of his body from the side of the load-bearing column and aimed at several Lud left paths not far away. However, just before the instrument on the pistol completely locked the target. On one side of the exhibition hall, several smoke bombs were suddenly thrown in from the window that was shattered by the explosion. Almost instantly, the thick smoke completely covered the interior of the exhibition hall. Old Wu immediately shrank back and lay on the ground, exposing half of his head and staring at the direction where the smoke bombs were thrown in. And in the smoke, you can vaguely see four fully armed guards entering the exhibition hall. But except for them, no one else followed them in. It should be that these guards happened to be patrolling nearby, and when they encountered an unexpected situation, they came to support with the fastest efficiency. Chun Ming was a little relieved when he saw this. Otherwise, if a large force really came, he would not have the fate of this armor-piercing class. The four guards came in and could not see Chin Ming and Lao Wu behind the load-bearing column. They could only see the only two people who were still moving in the entire exhibition hall. Those two terrorists. So the guards opened fire directly. The bullets passed through the smoke and accurately hit the two terrorists who were very close to the armor-piercing level, killing them instantly. The bombs on their bodies also exploded like the two terrorists before. The violent explosion left striking scars on the armor-piercing level by in steel armor placed next to it, and even several pieces of armor were completely shattered and fell off due to the explosion. Although the range of the explosion did not seem large, the actual explosion effect was somewhat beyond Chun Ming's expectations. I don't know what kind of explosives Wu Jing and his men used. In addition to the damage to the external armor, the support frame of the armor-piercing level was also directly blown off, tilted and fell on the ground with a loud noise. The eyes of the guard team who had just killed the terrorists were subconsciously attracted by the explosion and the damaged armor-piercing level. Ignoring the middle-aged man on the ground, putting his hand into his pocket again. And because the monitoring and power systems of the exhibition hall had long been controlled by Zhuo Jing's people, the guard team did not get the information about how many terrorists there were before entering. In addition, the middle-aged man found a person to lie down as before when he saw the smoke bomb fall to the ground, blocking the others in front of him. The guard team did not notice him lying on the ground when they first came in. All these factors combined gave the middle-aged man the opportunity to press the last activation number of the Mind Pulse device. The third Mind Pulse swept across the exhibition hall in an instant. Although the intensity of the Mind Pulse this time was much lower than the previous two times, it was still unbearable for ordinary people. The four ordinary guards fell down in an instant, and the exhibition hall suddenly became quiet again. Only the hissing sound of the smoke bomb emitting smoke remained. Seeing this, Chen Ming couldn't help but whisper to Lao Wu beside him. Is the government's response so slow? How long has it been? And only four people came to support? It's not a slow response. Look at this. Lao Wu also whispered and handed Chun Ming the terminal that he had opened at some unknown time. It was the news release website of the Star Domain Government. In addition to the news about the exhibition hall being attacked, there was another urgent news lined up in front of the exhibition hall. There was also an explosion on the space elevator, which was quite close to the government building. This was probably done by Zhu Jing. No wonder the support is so slow. Chun Ming looked up at the middle-aged man in the distance and said, I think I understand. Their initial target was not the armor-piercing ship. Otherwise, it would be better to wait until they were close enough to the armor-piercing ship before detonating the bomb or turning on the mind pulse. They turned on the mind pulse in advance to attract the government's attention and let the government's guards concentrate on the exhibition hall. At the same time, they made a feint to the east and attacked the west, preparing to attack the space elevator. If the spaceship exploded, the government would definitely only consider the space elevator, but if the spaceship did not explode, the government might still be a little entangled. 
as long as the time difference is slightly adjusted so that the time when the support troops arrive here matches the time when they're doing things at the space elevator, the support troops will be too busy all of a sudden. But there seems to be a problem with their coordination. They acted almost at the same time, so the guards basically didn't come to the exhibition hall. After all, the government can still make a decision immediately on the value of a spaceship and the value of a space elevator. Chun Ming returned the terminal to Lao Wu and asked, So we have been abandoned temporarily? Not necessarily. There will definitely be support, but the quantity and when it will come are uncertain. Chun Ming nodded slightly and said, That means we have a chance to do something now. Now this person is either unconscious, dead, or can't come. It's not right to miss this opportunity. He clenched the gun in his hand and said to Lao Wu seriously, Lao Wu, help me. Don't kill that person directly. I have something to do. At the same time, the middle-aged man also knew, like Chen Ming, that the current situation was very unfavorable to him. He used the mind pulse three times in a row, and there were two times when someone didn't fall down after the mind pulse. As a result, all four people he had arranged in advance died on the way. And his mission was not completed at all. Not only did he fail to attract the attention of the guards, he couldn't even blow up the spaceship. The middle-aged man turned his head and looked at the armor-piercing class that was tilted and lying on the ground in the distance, and a hesitant look appeared on his face. Then, he suddenly seemed to think of something that scared him, and his face was occupied by fear. He gritted his teeth and ran quickly towards the spaceship. At the same time, he began to untie the bundle of explosives that was also tied to him. The middle-aged man quickly came to the bow, to the position of the large load-bearing point that was slightly sunken into the hull. This is the weakest and most important part of the spacecraft. Destroying this place is equivalent to destroying the spacecraft itself. The middle-aged man held a bundle of explosives in his hand and wanted to climb up along the outer edge of the armor-piercing class. But just as he started to climb, he was suddenly kicked in the side ribs and a sharp pain spread throughout his body. The middle-aged man couldn't keep his balance all of a sudden, and the explosives in his hand slipped out of his hand and fell to the ground. He subconsciously reached for the remote detonation button of the explosives in his other pocket. But he was immediately kicked by another kick. Although the force of this kick was not as painful as the kick in his side ribs just now, it kicked his knuckles very trickily, directly breaking his knuckles. The middle-aged man gritted his teeth desperately to endure the severe pain and wanted to immediately lean on his intact hand to support the ground and stand up. But before he could do so, he felt a chill on his forehead. The middle-aged man's hair stood up, his whole body stiffened, and he slowly raised his head and looked at the man with a gun pointed at his forehead. Old Wu. Old Wu still had that smile on his face, but at this time there was no smile at all. Oh, what a coincidence, isn't this Shawnee? No wonder you called three directly last night. You want to have a lot of fun before you die. The middle-aged man Shun, he didn't expect that it would be old Wu who appeared here. He said with a hint of pleading and a hint of threat in his tone, You can't kill me. If you kill me, the explosives will explode and you and I will die in this position. That's not necessarily true. Chun Ming's voice sounded as he came to old Wu. Like old Wu, he raised his pistol and pointed it at Shen Yi's forehead. In addition to controlling the armor-piercing class, Chen Ming also took over the explosives that Shen Yi dropped and disposed of them. The method of handling is also very simple. Control the armor-piercing class, open the hatch of the armor-piercing class, throw the explosives in, and then choose to dismantle it. What is left is some materials that make up the explosives. Old Wu said to Chen Ming with some surprise, So fast it's done? As long as you touch it, it's done. It's a very simple thing. Okay. Old Wu took back the pistol, leaving Chen Ming alone to confront Shen Yi or to coerce him unilaterally. He took out the terminal, clicked on it a few times and said, I saw on the news that the blockade outside the exhibition hall has been set up. We are waiting for the space elevator to be completed and the large force to come to solve the problem here. We should not be able to get out, but at least we still have a lot of time. You decide how to deal with him. Don't kill me, Ma. Just as Shun Yi was about to speak, 
Lao Wu kicked him mercilessly again and said, You want to have a complaint after doing this kind of thing, right? Chun Ming stopped Lao Wu slightly to prevent Lao Wu from kicking him to death. He still had questions to ask. Chun Ming continued to point the gun at Shen Yi's forehead, his finger slightly pressed on the trigger and said, Let me ask you, who gave you the mind pulse device? Shen Yi said as if he had grabbed a life-saving straw. It was my superior. He asked me to activate the mind pulse device here in advance to attract the attention of the people on the other side. Who is your superior? I don't know. They have always contacted me one way, and the identity they contacted is also fake. I don't know who it is. It's all nonsense. No. No, ask something else. I know everything else. Don't kill me. I can provide you with information. Chun Ming ignored him, turned his head, and looked at Lao Wu and said, He is from Lu Zhuijing, right? Yes. Being able to carry out such a mission should be considered an insider. If you kill him, you will become enemies with Lu Zhuijing. This matter cannot be concealed. Mu Shuekong's name will definitely be recorded by Lu Zhuijing on their list. Is that so? Chun Ming turned his head back again and suddenly reached out to help Shen Yi, who was kneeling on the ground up. Shen Yi showed a look of fear and relief. He seemed to think that Chun Ming was afraid of Lu Zhuijing's name. But what Chun Ming wanted now was just to make Shen Yi's standing posture the same as the illusion he saw when he held the liar stone. After helping him up, Chun Ming put the pistol against Shen Yi's forehead again and pulled the trigger in his frightened eyes. I'm not afraid of these now. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.